hello everyone and welcome to Guild Cab episode 24 live on Twitch once again. From now on we are going to do the show live on Twitch. It is exciting. We already have 66 people here in the chat. You guys are awesome. How's it going welcome. guys? What's going on guys? <laughs> Thank so you much for joining us. Today we are going to be talking about all kinds of Juicy Heart of Thorns information that we have learned um, over this past week, actually just the last couple days since the embargo lifted on March 3rd on Tuesday, and lots of yeah. really awesome videos and previews and uh, information about the demos come out. So, but without further ado, I am your host Aurora Peachy, and I am joined today by my co-hosts Akasaurus Rex, Waka Waka, Corvus, yeah. and mm. Alex. Hey, what's going on? <laughs> all right, so the first thing I want to ask you guys today, what, of all of the, I assume you all have watched all the videos and everything that have come out the past couple right. days, um, what new thing in the demo um, that we saw <coughs> that wasn't previously announced uh, got you most excited? Um, the player character talking, like, just in the open world. No cutscenes <laughs> or anything like that, just yes. flow. It's... I was so agree. Goats. That got me more excited than anything. I yeah. almost felt bad about like even while I was there, like I freaked out when I like saw yeah. that the character was talking, and I was like, uh, they yeah. probably have other things. Like they probably want me to freak out, like actually getting to play the Revenant and stuff. I'm like, nope, yeah, yeah. character's talking. <laughs> <laughs> the, the really weird thing is, I was I was watching it for like five minutes, and I was like, you know, watching it going along pretty cool, and then I was like checking Twitter at the same time, and everyone was exploding about player character talking. I was like, <laughs> really? <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, I just washed over my head completely because in obviously in, in v uh, vanilla Guild Wars 2, as I assume it will soon be uh, called, um, you had the lovely kind of bits of art that kind of went, brung, ah, yes, uh, centaurs. The, 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 the talking the back and forth, brother, talking brother. heads. Yeah, yeah. I never minded that. I mean, it's, I quite it's, 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 it. it's, it's not, like, you know, the, the best thing since sliced bread, but... I I enjoyed it. I've always enjoyed it. I know a lot of people I, don't like it though. Yeah, it was. Yeah, I, I think, I think it was. It was a little bit weird that that kind of came in, and then um, in the first, in one of the first, no, it was um, the the Newt White Bear episode of season two, where you got your first kind of cut scene where um, characters started to interact. But I think kind of before that, it had just been done like out in the real world with. Um, just like through the normal interface, and you were just standing there, like being complete, and you going, "Hmm, yes, that's a good idea, Trahan." Yeah. We had Lincoln yeah. syndrome. <laughs> Lincoln Mario yeah. syndrome. They just don't yeah, talk. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Now the character no, would like, talk think... in in text. Yeah. In, in, yeah. And you yeah. see your head, and and you would be talking with the characters, but not, not nothing it's like this. Nothing same. like voice. Yeah. This is this is the same <clears> as if you, you know, I'm on my guardian and I do a shout. If I do <laughs> retreat, I, then the character yells retreat. Dream. And so it's yeah. the exact same thing um, in for uh, Heart of Thorns story instances. The yeah. actual character is going to talk, and you even, even have a, a text bubble above your head. Yeah, because like the the little cutscene things felt really separate. Like it was you know it was less immersive just because it went you know to a separate screen. But the, the little uh, transitions between them, like you know your character would kind of freak out for a second, then it would load in and play the cutscene with everyone talking and stuff. Yeah. Um, but this is like seamless. You're in the world. You're in the yeah. They're really you can smooth run around. Aren't they? You can move. Just, you can do whatever you want. You can yeah. fight, and your character will still be talking. I mean, the lips. There's like the lip sync and everything. It's great. Really. And I even it's, heard that the um, the so, something as subtle as like if if you're talking, let's say if you're talking to Bram in the world, your character will actually look over at Bram. Uh, cool. Oh, oh right. Yeah. See, it's it's it. It's that kind of minute detail which it, it really, really counts. Because I remember way back in Guild Wars One, I don't think we had talking lips till Nightfall. Uh, I think because no. certainly when I started playing Guild Wars One, there was no lip movement or anything like Even that. Even then, did we? Did we have? Uh, we ha we had it eventually. We had it either night Nightfall or either North. But yeah, just kind of like looking at all these little kind of nuances about how the character now interacts with the world around it. Um, mm -hmm. It's really cool it's and it's gonna be really nice to see if all of these changes are rolled out across the game because this is a big part of um of, I'm, I'm sure we're going to come on to it when we talk about the mastery system and how it affects the rest of Tyria. um but if all these little other bits and pieces can be rolled out across the world as well 
Yeah, yeah. definitely. And, and uh, in chat, Pinky Fluff, you hit it on the head, and I've been saying this too, that it actually makes uh, makes you feel like you have authority over the pack in Destiny's Edge. Because yeah. Because we, our yeah. character is the leader, is a packed commander, <clears throat> is the leader of, of our Destiny's Edge 2.0. Um, please give us a name for them, please. Yeah, um, no, right. But uh, <laughs> we are the commander. They look to us, and before it was like we just, I just kind of felt like just a part of them, and like I was tagging yeah. along with them. But with the voice, it really with makes, the boss, it really yeah. makes you feel like yeah. you are the commander. It's it's amazing. Yeah, and, I and love, um, like the char voice. Oh man. Yeah. <laughs> the the male char voice. He sounds like such a badass like keith david or something who like, yeah. like they're pretty good Goliath at getting the same Argo voice actors back oh. the human female was the same voice um mm, yeah we, we could only play human in the demo um and I'm, I'm assuming the male human was the same voice i haven't heard anybody comment on that well so i hope the rest of them are also the same well um, um ma male human is uh, nolan north i believe who was um oh, what's what's the bloke's name from uncharted nathan drake so um, mm. Nolan North is pretty much every major male character in uh, game series from the last couple of years, aside from uh, Commander Shepard, I think. Yeah. Um, so yeah, he, um, him, and I think um, Jen Hale, who did Jenna, I think she does a lot of the back, uh, a lot of the generic voices as well, as well. And if if they manage to get um, Felicia Day back and they manage to get Steve Bloom back to do uh, Zoja and Ritlock, um, they should get the other yeah. ones too. Yeah. They'll yeah. easily be able to get the rest. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, that was like the thing that, like, as I, w I went straight in and watched your video, you know, just like the first story instance, and like, mm. and like, because because I wasn't expecting it at all, like, yeah. um, that it like took me by surprise, and then I got like double excited <laughs> because it was just like, oh wow, oh my god, yeah, <laughs> so, yeah, that that was the most exciting thing, which, I mean, there's a lot of other exciting things, but like, I think that took yeah took the top the, the lead. Um, and... Before we move on, um, Cher Dill asks, do you guys think they will continue the PC voice after the expansion in Living Story updates? Um, yes, I believe they will. Yes. Yeah, because I, so. I, I talked to Bobby Stein about this, and because he was uh, you know big in implementing uh, the the character having voices, and um, he said that the, they wanted to do it in the living world but the technology wasn't there they said the technology and the programming is very very difficult to it was this was very difficult to do and they just didn't have it in a state where they felt comfortable releasing it at that point when season two and and season yeah. one was out so now that they have that technology in place it will it should be easier for them to implement it in future Sweet. Living World updates as long as they can get all the voice actors back because that's, yeah. that's 10 voice actors. That's, that's 10, you know, different voices and uh, that you have to do of all yeah. the same dialogue. Yeah. So that, that mm. there is a lot of work and a lot of expense, but yeah. I believe they will. Yeah. Especially I mean, the, the, thing the is, kind of the, the future Living World stuff is done in a similar way to like season two. Like they had to take breaks, you know, and they were working on it constantly throughout the year. Yeah. Um, and moving things around and stuff. And so they have to be really on the ball of what dialogue's going where and what they're going to need, like, to, you know, to be able to get the people in and record everything they need. Because I doubt they're going to be able to bring these actors in, you know, every other week just to, right. you know, change stuff up a little bit or refine things. Yeah. So yeah. Right. fingers I mean, crossed, I mean, though. I mean, hopefully yeah. they, they, they could do it all in one. <laughs> Matt Zimming says he wants to see all the characters speak in pig Latin, which would be amazing. <laughs> <laughs> that is Hello. the other thing, is they have to do different languages too. Yeah. Yeah, good point. It's a yeah. lot of work. But, yeah, but potentially, if, if they've managed to get everyone in to do the expansion, um, and we know from what Colin said and from what um, uh, everyone's been talking about, that they, they, they've plan been planning this out years and years ahead. So yeah. they're probably at the planning stage of the um, next expansion already. There's no reason why they can't get a preliminary script written and have, you know, hey, everyone's here. Let's just let's just bang through a quick first draft of the uh, of season three of the Living Story. Mm. Mm. Save and save money, I think. Yeah, that that's mm. pretty cool actually. Thinking that you know season three is potentially already in the works. Yeah, <laughs> that's crazy. <laughs> So, so next time you go to Seattle, oh, Peachy, um, if you can find an unattended PC and have a and just have a mine have a through the servers, around. <laughs> what? <laughs> just just find all of these files of audio <laughs> and just <laughs> put them online. For just it. hack like, Arena so, Net's interface. That's that shaman's job. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, 
I tell you what, I don't, I don't know if it's come up on your channel uh, yet, Peach. I don't know if you managed to record it, um, but I, I managed to uh, see, I think it was Matt Visual's recording of the Wyvern fight, mm. mm -hmm. which just looked incredible. Oh, and, it is so oh, cool. So good. It is, and this and, is just, they said, that they, they haven't called it like a, like a mini boss, but it's just like, it's just a boss that you come across in the open world. It's not yeah. a world boss. It's not, a, you know, a major boss major boss they're like no oh, this is just one of our bosses yeah, it's, yeah. it's amazing <laughs> but it just looked so cool and, and there's lots of there's been things on twitter about oh they made it easy for easier for the press it was like well yeah like a lot of these people haven't played the game since launch and they're you know? gonna be yeah, playing totally. revenant a class they're not used to because everybody's yeah. gonna want to play revenant so right, absolutely yeah and um but what i thought was really really interesting was it they were talking about how it rises up and does this big kind of knockback attack and is like oh my god and that's like insta death but then you cross reference it with one of Richie's videos which is the mastery system again I don't know if you've put one of these up so I apologize if you have and I'm not like going no go and watch PTs instead um, but um, but there's there's like the top trait that you can get in like wyvern defense or yeah. something where you you're not affected by that attack anymore and once you've got, <laughs> once you've got that you're like rolling you're just like ah gonna yeah. try and knock you off it's like no it, but it yeah it just looks really really cool and that there's an element of player progression in dealing with these world boss fights as well not that you can just kind of turn up and dps it you've got to have done quite a large portion of you know um other bits and pieces in the game Right, right. Something, uh, something that I really liked about the Wyvern fight is um, coming from a visually impaired background. For it, is that um, uh, it's not using a hell of a lot of telegraphs, and instead, it, I, I really was impressed by the system of the uh, fire marks of how like yeah. that's like an added part of the actual difficulty of the fight. Is that they're so they're really bright, yeah. but not obtrusively so not like yeah, jarringly yeah. so but they're really nice and bright and very easy to see especially if you've got vision problems like myself so it's very easy to see those while keeping it challenging for everyone and uh, I, I just really love that because the thing i don't think the thing actually had actual telegraphs that you you could tell everything by the movements and by those the fire directions and that Some that felt very do, yeah very good yeah <laughs> there's these lava pools that appear on the ground and they they have the red telegraph circle um, it does the thing where it flaps its wings, and you can again, like you said, it doesn't. Ha I don't think it has like a, like a um, a UI, um, yeah, telegraph. It just you can tell this thing like rears up, and it's gonna flap yeah. its wings. It's like, oh, get out of the way! And then, you know, <laughs> yeah. if you're in the way, it will blow you right off the edge, and you yeah. uh, you better have your your glider skill ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's like um, turning the telegraphs into kind of part of the animation instead of. You know, just ramming this huge thing on the, on the ground, which is right. obviously not, you know, like it's not immersion breaking because you're playing a game, but like, I think it's always cooler when they make it part of the animation. So you have to learn and you have to judge the enemy yeah. rather than just look at a big red thing that appears. Right, and you're pretty Super much cool. just fighting the wyvern itself. You don't have like a million yeah. other little enemies, so you can just look at its telegraphs. Yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. Its animations. <clears throat> have you guys seen that 1980s movie called Dragon Slayer, mm -mm. where it's like. The uh, dragon you fight look, or the the uh, dragon in that movie, looks almost exactly like the Wyvern. So, oh, cool. so for all of you movie hounds, find Dragon Slayer. It's a brilliant movie from 1980s. It's a brilliant stop motion effect, and the dragon looks just like that. <laughs> and it's really an awesome movie, by the way. Just to put that in there, it's really freaking awesome. Um, but it, it looks just like this Wyvern fight. So it's like it's it's pretty. I really like the design of it. I think, they, and that paired with the animations, like it just visually, it's amazing. And yeah. I think it's it's going to be a lot of fun with a lot of people, you know, being blown off the edges and just everyone. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I mean, I and was the, only the on the platform cool. with about like maybe five other people at a time. Mm. But um, you know, if you're going to have a whole open world and like you have like tons of people there well, fighting say, this yeah. thing, but you're but you're only on this tiny little platform and people are being blown off and it oh it just it was really really cool like this thing will fly up into the air and it pretty much flies up Carpet and like bomb. disappears there's like clouds and smoke and from all the fires and everything it'll fly up into the air and it'll kind of disappear so even if you even if you look up and try and follow it 
it disappears into the clouds so you can't mm. see where it's going to appear next. <laughs> so so I'm like, I found myself like running around trying to avoid the fires and constantly like looking all around, like trying to see like, <laughs> where is this thing going to dive bomb me? And like, it'll just come from behind you and just like just and, and spit uh, fire yeah. in a line of fire. It's really intense. It's really That's cool. so good. And the fact that it's you just out there in the open world as movie. well is amazing. Yeah. <laughs> like, and there's something mentioned that you can just that there's going to be ones on platforms and that you, you can shoot some of them down with harpoons as well. So yeah. can you just yeah. uh, that's an opportunity for some major trollage there if people are like, no, we're escorting newbies through this area and someone comes along with a harpoon and like, Vern on your head. Yeah, how you get to the fight actually is you're on the ground and then there is a there's a copter and you have an option to <laughs> get to the chopper <laughs> you have an option to get into the helicopter and it'll say uh, we need we need help this dragon is you know is fighting us or whatever or is attacking us so then you go in the helicopter you get teleported up to this waypoint up this, this little ledge and there's pale reavers there trying to snipe this thing and, and bring it down but you and so i guess if you maybe if you have the right mastery unlocked you have the ability <coughs> to um to use these guns to help shoot it down um or then you can jump off this platform and glide over to the platform to go, to so go fight awesome. it head wow. on it's just so really good. oh and this is just the first map like this is just the yeah. starting zone of heart of thorns i can and it's fantastic i can i cannot wait to see i want to see like the heart of maguma i want to see like the big yeah. jungle map oh amazing can't wait and so <clears throat> Oh, I, I, I was I was going to ask as well, Peachy. How um how how does the Revenant play? How does it? What does it? What does it play like? Um, I mean, or is it quite dependent on like the legends that you have? Yeah, the legends will change. Yeah, that'll change the play experience a lot. Even though it just changes your utility, your heal, your utility, and your elite skills. Um, you can tell a very big difference between like we we got you get the um. In the demo, you get the choice between uh, Jalus, Iron Hammer, and Malix. And if you're, and I like, I liked uh, Jalus much, much more because he's focused on like defense and like just raw like power. And yeah, whereas Malix is all about has has this completely different mechanic where it's all about like um, like um, uh, conditions and boons yeah. and and. I think to really optimize how you play Malix, you really have to kind of learn about it and learn how to, like you can have conditions on yourself, but they don't affect you. And then you can, and then your other powers are stronger and there's all this like back and forth and you really have to learn it. Like, so, so I wasn't going to sit there and use my time <laughs> trying to you know, <laughs> learn the intimate intricacies of, of how to play Malix. So um, I just played Jalus most of the time. And I yeah. was having so much fun with the hammer and the and the ranged hammer and all of its skills that I I like. <laughs> we, awesome. we got to play what mace and axe. Mace and axe. Yeah. yeah. I did. I like completely forgot to even switch to that because I was having so much fun <laughs> with the hammer. Yeah. Uh, Lord T Lord Tyrius asks, will there be more legends and choose different skills for them? Um, as f uh, they've only announced two legends so far, which are Jalisan Hammer and uh, Malix, the Unyielding. <clears throat> but they, um, they, they did say more were coming. Yeah, there will be more. Yeah. yeah. Um, did you get to uh, Did you get to mess around with any other like utility skills, or were the the four that you had there just locked in? Well, I think um, Wooden Potatoes in his video said that you can't. There aren't more skills. It's the uh, arrow it's, things that are there to just to rearrange yeah, exactly. things. Exactly. Just shift them around. Ah, right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But it's so just those your legend things. completely controls it. There's no kind of customization beyond that. Mm -hmm. I think. And there's also okay. no weapon cool. swapping. So in combat, you can't swap to another weapon. But yeah. the legends letting you swap the other side of your skill bar is it kind of, you know, is why yeah. you don't get Balance a out. weapon yeah. swap in combat. Which is pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. So also, um, I really like. Did... Oh, oh no, go on, go on. Yeah, I was, I was, I was, I was, I was gonna say. I was just gonna say. <laughs> go, 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 ahead, go, go. Okay, mine's like really quick. I was, I was, I was just gonna say that I, I, I really love the uh, elite skill of uh, Jalus with the uh, right oh, to the Iron Dwarf. Just, he turns like, it on. So good. Like, yeah. Yeah, I like that. It's like it's just like really simple. It's like you just get really hard to hit. It's like cool. Yeah, I'm, I'm totally on the Dwarf. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, that's this is what I was going to say. <laughs> After you, my friend. I've completely forgotten what I was going to say. Um, <laughs> but yeah, but no, it it like there's, there's so much of it that that looked really good, and um, I quite liked um, where the story was going. Um, I was I was talking to someone in in, in the Peachy Guild a little bit earlier uh, while we were setting up, and um, there seems to be a, a really positive um, impact on. The fact that people are uh, going, that they're starting to push in a in a, in a darker direction with the storyline. That you know, people have got captured. People are, um, uh, you know, people. Yeah, people stuff. are corrupted. People are dead, and uh, yeah, it, it 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 seems to be a really kind of in, interesting way that people are embracing it because there's there's been particular aspects of the game previously. Like as much as we all love Tibalt, Tibalt on the apples, it's a little bit kind of a little bit kind of Disney, isn't it? Um, yeah, but it's Tibbs. I know as great as, as, as great as Tibbs is, um, but it's it's it's, it's 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 nice to see that um, they're kind of you know going right. Um, you know we're we're in trouble, is what we're saying. Yeah. People. Oh yeah, and <clears throat> as someone mentioned in chat as well, the options in the story are back, and that kind of ties in with what you were saying because I think the options you got you can only take one in the demo. But um, one of the options was basically to just leave the prisoners or whatever that had been taken yeah. to die. So, like, it's getting darker, but you're actually able to go down a darker route as well. Like, your player uh, player character is able to do that, which is super cool. Um, yeah, and I, I hope they really uh, they go a lot further with this we hate the Silvari thing because, yeah. I don't know, that'd be cool to see. And I, I play a Silvari, and... <laughs> I don't know. I, I kind of want to be hated just for the depth Ooh, of the story and stuff, you know? That'd be cool. <laughs> I'm really curious how different the story's going to be for the Silvari. I mean, are they going to get to... Do they have completely different story paths for the well, Silvari? Yeah, if, you, if you play a Silvari, like... Ugh. They've even, well, they I, even I, said one of the dialogues was that uh, Larenthir was saying, people are not trusting me because I'm a Silvari. I've had trouble mm, yeah. rallying my troops, so I, yeah. I, you know, I need you to help me. Well... If the player character is also a Savari, are you gonna have like Bram and Rocks like start yeah. to say like, "You okay, boss? Like, <laughs> how you feeling?" But, but <laughs> what's, what's Jury really... was like, um, uh, uh, Jury was like already like saying in her her like voices like she like sounded pretty un trustworthy of the Silvari, like from like yeah. the bit that I heard, like she was kind of like, yeah, they're Silvari. I was like, wow, yeah, she's... Yeah. <laughs> and, she and is not like, hiding her prejudice Scarlet, there. It happened to Aaron, you know, like listing the examples of Silvari being weird and stuff. Yeah. I don't know. There's a lot they could do with this. Being um, weird. So if, if, if you want to draw comparisons about <laughs> being weird, there's only one person that carries the soul of a dead sister around in the soul. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. that's let's, let's level let's level the playing field out here. You yeah, know, yeah, fair she's enough, fair she's enough. she's Whoa. she's not playing with a full deck. <laughs> Her sister did get killed by the 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 creator of the Silvar. Yeah. Oh, yeah, and see that's another thing they could really I reckon <laughs> they could make her like Super angsty towards Silvari, that'd be really cool. Yeah. <laughs> and maybe Casimir contrasts that and they get a bit, you know, squabbly yeah. and then one Aww. of them dies and. No! Yeah. Don't what? Say that. what? Yeah. Death to Casimir? Totally. Death to Casimir 2015? Death to Casimir? And then, and then the jewelry suicide. <laughs> <laughs> Double suicide. That's terrible. Oh, dear. Do a Romeo and Juliet, girls, come on. <laughs> It's really weird for a game that we love so much. We want so many important people yeah, to die. No I yeah. I, I mean, I, I don't want any characters to die, but I think it would be it would create a really like really intense. It would create a lot of drama. It would be really good <clears> for the story. I ideally like. I really want a member of Destiny's Edge that went down in the jungle to die to have died yeah. in that crash, yeah, and yeah, then sure. the Revenant can can channel them. That'd be mm. cool. Yeah, that. I mean, really the thing cool. is, I think. We're we're all fairly agreed on which one of Destiny's Edge we want dead, aren't we? Oh yes. We are. I, Logan let's, would let's, be such a lame Logan, legend, Logan though. To die, Logan, the Logan, the lame Logan. Who do you legend. want as a legend for the Revenant? Not Logan. Yeah. Sp- I, I don't Your want. Your elite okay, skill I, is to run away. Yeah, right? gives you like infinite swiftness. <laughs> Running <laughs> speed. <laughs> I think Logan deserves to die most, but I think Air is the most yeah. likely. 
just because yeah. um, the last couple of episodes from season two were like, you know, really bringing out the bond between Aaron and Bram ah, and like yeah. some so of the dialogue. Cool. Like, yeah. I think I think in I think it was maybe the finale or or the one before that. But like, uh, Bram and Air were talking about how they were gonna go get like a drink after this is all yeah. uh, it all blown yeah. over. And it's like that's the thing people say in movies and stuff before they die. You know, <laughs> like I knew at that point that we're she was gonna, gonna get die. that drink in the afterlife. <laughs> yeah. uh, she's got a and giant this, red target so on her face <laughs> and, the, and the story instance did like was all about Bram like running ahead cause he's like my mom's yeah. out there and he's running ahead oh, and coming, he's mama. all of a sudden like cares so much about her oh, and Pinky man. just said it well um, so air dies though. air dies Bram takes a longbow and that's why guardians get longbows <laughs> uh, I love it right. <laughs> I love it and at the end of the expansion, Bram and Rox get married, so they're just bringing it back up. Ah, oh, let's let's no. be adorable. Let's quickly deviate away from that before we get to, that's that's All the whole corner fiction. of the internet we don't want to visit. <laughs> but um, but but no, it it is kind of interesting that um, what what uh, I think about thirty seconds into the um, into the story into the story mission, they um. They very quickly established that um, a lot of these these main characters were kind of locked up, and it seems like the first act of Heart of Thorns is that we're going to have to go and rescue them and uh, kind of put the team back together, kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. And it actually said in the story instance that they were taken prisoner. Yeah. I don't know how they like, know that. consciously taken. I don't know how they even know that. Like they they don't even know if they're alive yet. They said they've been taken prisoner, unless they just mean because. Mordremoth's vines was the ones that ripped them out of the sky, mm -hmm. and so he figures mm -hmm. that Mordremoth like has them because we, we've seen packed soldiers in these vine cages. Like that's our other yeah. mission is to go rescue these these soldiers that are that are trapped. So I guess maybe they just assume that. That's yeah. Exactly. Well, it was yeah. said that like oh. um, they had cut bits out of that just to make it really streamlined for people who are playing at uh, packs and stuff. So maybe we'll get a bit more of. I don't know, maybe a little bit extra cutscene or something like that that will show a bit more clearly what's happened to them and how they've yeah. been taken hostage kind saying, of thing. People how did we even get there? Like, this is where the yeah. Pact took their airships in. Like, how did we get there? That, yeah. it might, this might not be, there might be something in between us. You know, there's going to be some kind of story about how we got out there. This is just for the Yeah, demo. totally. It, yeah. Well, I was thinking, what about if, um, because in, when uh, they, when there was, uh, the Mastery videos came out, there was um there was a thing called exalt there's thing called exalted law Mercer. and there's things about Mercer. yeah Mercer. i mean because they were talking about you know you get access to vendors or whatever in the golden city what if the there's like this golden nice city. little twist that the the, the, the Masart who live in the golden city you know they've they taken them. They, yeah they've captured yeah, them. they don't know who they are and, I've, I've, <laughs> and, and the thing is of of course they 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 recognize logan as as a Crichton who uh you know they just go oh you took away our uh you know our monopoly over over the humans mm. when um you know when you let the titans out and everything and so it creates a nice little bit of friction there but in the end we all come together like an 80s action movie and learn <laughs> to work as a team yeah, yeah. <laughs> hell yeah <laughs> But Lazarus well, is still out like there as well, isn't he? Yeah. Mm. What if what if what if we what if we find Lazarus in the Golden City? That'd be yeah. pretty cool. Mm. I, they got to be more sad. Even in the um in, in all the mastery tracks, uh, um, Richie's video is fantastic. It goes through every single mm. mastery track. Yeah. There's so much about the lore. Um. And yeah. The only like the only ones with parentheses around them are about the exalted. All these feats with the exalted. I think they just don't want to call them Mursat. I think uh, once totally. it launches, it's going to be called Mursat lore, and it's yeah. going to be, so they're just calling it Exalted. Yeah. Oh, that's a oh, point. God, and Kadix just say, because Kanak's Kanak, uh, with us, um, that he could possibly be under the influence of Countess Anise. Countess Anise is the head of the Shining Blade. The Shining Blade fought in Guild Wars 1 the White Mantle, who are being manipulated by the Mursat. It's all. <gasps> it's all. <laughs> oh my god! It's like spaghetti, man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Someone asked what I thought about the music. Um, yeah, I heard that, and it sounded amazing. Yeah. Really, really yeah. cool. I hope that's like the title screen music or something. That'd be amazing. Yeah. Anyway, like, back, he, back on topic. He, he, 
No, I was. I just want to say he's like. Um, I always forget which which way which way around his name is. Is it Dima McLean or McLean Dima? I always McLean forget. McLean Dima. McLean Dima. He's, yeah. he's done. I think I've just been watching Die Hard too much. McLean. <laughs> 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 but he's he's done such a wonderful wonderful job up to the point where I think that his work that I've heard so far surpasses the original soundtrack for Guild Wars Two. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. Definitely. Yeah. And obviously, Jeremy Soul is like the guy for game soundtracks, but what he's done is just phenomenal. Like when the PAX announcement was going on, I was just yeah, sitting there, it's like everything. getting tingles up my spine. I know, I I know, right? going, Get out of bed, it's all. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that. That was good. <laughs> yeah, I totally but agree. I, I love all the new music. Mm-hmm. So was 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 it, was it just like the first story instance that you got to play, and then when you killed that guy at the end, um, that was kind of the end of it. It it, it kicked you out um, into the map, to the open yeah. world map, and then in there, yeah, there wasn't any other like story star like go here to continue. It was just that was it, and you got to do the open world which, endless Mordrum to fight. Um, yeah. And yeah. there was uh, <laughs> there was all the stuff like. Um, adventures there was the outpost like i said you got to take that copter up to the platform to go fight the wyvern i didn't even find that copter the first time i played because we played through once and then we played through again to record and the first playthrough i played i played it for 40 minutes and i didn't even find that chopper and then i just happened i was like i need to like my second playthrough i said okay i i ran around in the open world and killed mordrum enough I also tried the adventure, which was just singeing all these little Mordrum vines. Um, I was at the flamethrower one. Yeah, 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 the one they, they cool. previewed on Poi. You get to play that, and then, um, but uh, yeah, when you play it, because I know you guys are going to rest, um, make sure to find that copter, because that copter will get you up to, <laughs> will get you up to the the river fight. fight. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> How big Were did the map up? feel? The like, because I, I know huge. it was kind of closed off, right? Like, yeah, yeah, you. There were still really places you could It's go. not like, oh, if I take, if I spend my forty minutes just running, I'll, I'll be able to find everything. I mean, they, yeah, they closed yeah. it off, so you have a limited space yeah. to play in. But like they've said for the Heart of Thorns maps, that map was so dense. It was so jam packed with events, adventures, outposts, you know, boss nice. battles. It was just really, really compact and very detailed. Like you just look off into the distance, and there's just vines and packed airships and fires and explosions. Like you run past, like it has it like scripted. When you run past this, this, you know, piece of ground, like this will explode over here. Oh, it's that's so yeah. cool. Nice. It's really cool. I'm <laughs> so excited to get further into the jungle when it comes out. Yeah. yeah. Were you able to? Um, uh, uh, were you or was anyone else able to try out the other specializations, by any chance? No. Or were you no, all only on, like the revenant? Yeah. No, you get to play any class you want, um, but everybody played revenant. Yeah. Um, but yeah. there's no information. Wooden Potato said that he looked. He's like, oh, that was the first yeah. thing I did. Was I went into every menu. <laughs> I went into the wardrobe. Yeah. I went into everything, trying to find anything that they possibly left in, and he said he couldn't find anything. So, um, anybody hoping for specializations? Now, they might announce the specializations, but you won't be able to find them in-game in the demo. And the demo we played <laughs> was what's going to be at PAX East and Res. So, no. um, you know, so I, I, I saw some people on Twitter this morning saying, oh, I hope that in the demo we'll get to play as the new specializations. You won't. Mm. Sorry. No. It's, oh, it's, the same, it's the same demo, isn't it? I think it? that's Which what I'm think... looking forward to. <laughs> it's the same. It's very, very well yeah. done. It's a great demo. Yeah, which I think there's actually um, there's a, there's probably a whole bunch of people playing it probably about now at PAX. Cause Not PAX, now. It's yeah, still, well, no, I don't know. Doesn't doesn't it? Does PAX start today or is it this weekend? This is like day this zero starts... for PAX, ah, yeah. right. so I don't think anything's actually like this is like set up. Be day. tomorrow probably. Ah, right. Okay. Yes, but tomorrow, we'll, yeah, will probably be when people actually get to play it. Oh, cool. Yeah, it's. I, I'm. I'm. I'm really looking forward to have to having a mess around with the, uh, with the demo. I think oh, it's, it's gonna be cool. So weird, and, man. Yeah, and I, I'm. I'm super keen on the mastery system. I've got to admit, I was. I was a little bit, a little bit disappointed. There wasn't much in terms of the mastery system for the rest of Tyria, because that's it's 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 almost kind of weird weird that that's the stuff that i'm really interested in i want to see how the new system affects the rest of the world and i could mm-hmm. see there was a little bit about the um about the precursors there 
yeah. and there's there's another trait line which I've completely forgotten, and I've completely forgotten what it said. The but, fractals um, one. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's right. Yeah. Fractals, it's the fractals and one. precursors. I think were the yeah, two. Yeah, that was. Yeah. That was the only ones they showed the off for. The rest of Tyria, and then the jungle. Area. Yeah, the jungle had um, three different lore tracks. Um, mm -hmm. One for one for the exalted, the Mursat. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the uh, the, Itzel, the Itzel, which is the which is the like yeah. they're like cousins to the Hylek. The hippie yeah. Hylek. The hippie Hylek. There's like two, <laughs> two, two, two like frog people. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They're they're similar to the Hylek, but they have like a different kind of dialect, so it's hard to understand yeah. them. Um, and then so there's a mastery track, so you can you can understand them, you can communicate with them. There's like signposts you can read. There's signposts around the jungle to get to new areas of the jungle. Um, and then there was something else that I forget the name of that we have never heard before. It was the. But it was they they were they were more like um, an aggressive. They were like super. They yeah, were very yeah. like yeah, based on like uh, um, like fighting, well, like physical yeah. confrontation. They were a little like you said, a little bit more like brutish. Um, mm. New York, yeah. yeah. New York, New York. That's it. New York. Yeah. That's it. That's Good that's stuff. Field was too, Lexi. Monkey people. Monkey people. <laughs> 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 Actually, but, reading through all the like masteries the and the, ex the explanations wow. next to them, and it kind of made sense because we don't know what they are yet, right? Um, I what? think it. I think it no, did say. Seen... Were... I think it did we... say they were another kind of high leg, didn't? Oh, they? Yeah, yeah, they're like the super yeah, a... frog type. They look super way frog. more like frogs. Super, super frogs, frogs. Oh, really? dude. <laughs> look oh, like way frog more like frogs than, than normal <laughs> high legs. Yeah, I think they look a lot cooler. I think they were quite literally battle toads. <laughs> that would be awesome. That would, that would be awesome. That's an internet meme for you, boys and girls. <laughs> you guys can battle to <laughs> This is our height. Oh, Welcome to 2007. <laughs> right, okay. That's like older than that, man. But no, like what what I thought was really cool was be to to progress. Um, a lot, um, even even in game, you are going to need to put um, your first few mastery points in. Like at least the first level of all of these traits, rather than just deciding, I want to sync everything into um, mm -hmm. uh, like gliding or exalted or whatever. So because you know you've got to unlock vendors, you've got to unlock rudimentary um, conversation with people. So yeah, if you want to go into Heart of Thorns, you can't just drop every all of your mastery points into Tyria I mean, into you can old Tyria. But I th don't yeah. think it would be very wise. No, I, I don't. Yeah, I think you just kind of go right. I've got done all this stuff in in the old world. Right. Now I'm into Heart of Thorns, and you've got to really, really grind out some more mastery points just to kind of like get the basic things done. Yeah. Which, uh, something what I found I was interesting was oh, sorry. Uh, Any... Something that I thought I, that I don't know if they've uh, they've revealed yet is that are we going to have all of the masteries unlocked right at the beginning, or as we get deeper into the jungle, are they going right. to be unlocked? Like, are we going to be able to unlock lore for for the Itzel before we even meet the Itzel? That I don't yeah. know. Yeah, well, that's that's what I was wondering as well, like whether they're you you know you kind of have to earn them or something, like reach a certain point, and unlock this mastery, or do this kind of quest or event or something, and then you have the opportunity to learn their language or whatever. Yeah. Um, because it would be strange, you know, especially for like I don't know, like to just yeah, like you said, turn turn on the game, jump in, and you know, have all these options, and you've right. never met these guys, never even been to the heart of the Maguma yet. So yeah, that that wouldn't make sense. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty excited yeah. about that. That like lore track is so cool. I love, I love the concept. It's gonna be it. it's gonna be so hard for me to decide what, what I do first. Like I, I think I'll definitely put one in each, you know, just so I can do the basic gliding, and kind of get everywhere, like be allowed into these places. But like, I don't know. It's it's gonna be hard to pick, you know, pick one to just specialize in straight away. Mm -hmm. I'll be going straight for the lore one right away, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> And I'm like just like really hoping that there's gonna be like lots of races for us to interact with, and hopefully they're not they're not all frogs. But um, <laughs> I'm just really hoping like they could throw like a Tengu race or a lizard people race. Come on, baby. Oh man, that'd be cool. Yeah, because I mean we don't know what's we don't know what's in the other zones that they're adding, right? We've we've right. seen a small part of the first zone, and we know obviously there's gonna be those races in there that we've seen the masteries for. Yeah. But there could very well be more, um, and that's super cool. Yeah. Super cool. There's there's just so, so much stuff. I, I, um, oh yeah, what what are you guys gonna do first? Are you gonna level a revenant, or are you gonna go and dive into into the expansion and get your specialization unlocked? Still, dive in, it's gonna be my, my main goal. Mm -hmm. 
do the finish. I'm gonna go as far into the story as I can, and I think I'm gonna, you know, if I need like a the next gliding mastery to get to the next part of the like story, or whatever, I'm gonna do that and just follow the story as far as I can go first. And if I can, you know, specialize along the way, then that's what I'll do. Mm. Yeah, Definitely. I agree. I, I think I'm going to take my guardian is my main, even though I have one yeah. of every class, and I I I need a revenant eighty eventually, but. I yeah I agree with you. I'm gonna take my guardian in through the story first, and then worry about everything else. <laughs> yeah yeah. I'm gonna make a I'm, I'm gonna make a druid and just go diving straight in, baby. <laughs> oh yeah. I'm not gonna look back. <laughs> How about you? I th I think that that kind of makes sense for the way for for the way to do it. Take your main and di and dive in because you can imagine if you get like your level one revenant and then you have to do. It's great, as, as, as much as we all love Guild Wars 2, doing vanilla Guild Wars 2 just to get to the thing that's just come out. It's just like, ah, but, 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 but everyone else is having fun in the yeah. jungle with, with the wings. And, and I, it's like, and, I, and I'm here fighting steam creatures in Lawlar's Pass and everyone else exactly, is having fun. Exactly, exactly, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and for anybody who's going to play the demo, there's remember that it is a demo, and they're giving you stuff faster than you'll earn it in order just for, in order for you to experience it. For example, yeah. um, in, whenever you finish the story instance, you're going to get two mastery points, and so you can unlock gliding. And when you you have to unlock it, you put a point into it, and then you equip it. So then the experience that you're earning playing the game will go towards unlocking more. Um, levels in in gliding for example um, however in the demo when you put that first mastery point in gliding it's going to give you the level one immediately whereas in the in the live game it's not going to do that you have to still fill up your experience bar basically in order to unlock the first level of gliding but yeah. they give it to you yeah. immediately in the demo so that you have a chance to actually play around with the glider because you don't have so time cool. in, in 40 minutes to to fill up your experience bar yeah yeah I just love how like different all this um, these like mastery systems are for like this whole like new form of expansion leveling. It's this is such a these are such creative, cool ways to do it instead of the usual way that all MMOs have done of just having like here's an extra ten levels, have fun, and here's an extra ten well, levels. It. It's really cool to just like do this. I mean, you could you could. You could count up like all of the if you wanted to master everything, you could probably count up all of the points you'd need, and so you could kind of you know how many levels you're gonna need to grow to unlock everything, and so they're so they're kind of adding like they're adding way more levels than you they would normally in a traditional kind of MMO expansion through that. Yeah. But instead of just you know you're at the same kind of stat ratio, just you know ten levels higher or something like that. This you're actually getting like mechanical changes and progression yeah. to your character yeah, yeah so really they're adding way deeper than just like an extra 10 levels and actually means a lot more as well so right. i don't yeah. know I, I really like the system that they're doing. you actually this learn awesome. like physical abilities such as gliding yeah. such as speaking to another race rather than oh my numbers went up yeah, yeah exactly yeah absolutely cool yeah it's brilliant. And they it, said that this 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 mastery system and this way of progressing and building your character, they said that this is like the groundwork for the rest of the game. Like, you know, yeah. future so awesome. expansions, future living world, they can just add more and more masteries. You can get more and more abilities. And it's like Metroid or Legend of Zelda where, mm -hmm. you you know, you get the hook shot, you get the boots, you get items, you get abilities, um, not necessarily, you know, Link's level link never levels up he just yeah. gets yeah. new abilities yep. and new items <clears throat> that he can use and that he can learn how to use mm -hmm. and that is your sense of progression it's it's yeah. brilliant which it's i brilliant. it's I just it. awesome and, and <laughs> I, I would way rather that you know a, a really noticeable like difference it's going to change the way you play you know instead of walking around you're going to jump off a cliff and glide somewhere you know that's way more rewarding and and it, you know like but if you were to just, just go up a level you, you never notice the number changes, you know, especially in Guild Wars where everything's scaled anyway. Like, you yeah, never, it's right. never going to feel like you've, I mean, you feel like you've achieved something, kind of, but, um, you know, it's never going to meet, like, mean that much to you. You know, it's not going to make a difference to the way you play, but this yeah. totally is. It's going to unlock areas for you. It's going to, you know, completely change the way you move around the map and travel and stuff, which is huge, huge. Yeah. I th I think I think the Zelda comparison it is is a lot more apt than the one I made the other uh, when the mastery system first came out which was the Diablo 3 Paragon system cuz mm. all the um yeah 
because all, all all that happens with the paragon uh, with the paragon system is that you add like five point five percent DPS, and that's it. Yeah. So like so like like you say the uh, the mastery system is is going to change the way that you play <clears throat> instead of just kind of oh you get a little bit more DPS because if if that's what we were going to do we might as well slap another ten levels on oh, and, exactly. and get some, yeah. and get some yeah. new yeah. gear. And Matt's uh, Matt's amazing in chat said. Um, uh, you lose a progression out of the Maguma jungle, and if you learn to glide in the Maguma jungle, you should learn how to glide out of it. The prob the problem is with that that um, the, I, I get the impression the way that they're building uh, Heart of Thorns, it's going to be, it sounds like it's going to just be one enormous area with various tiers, and gliding in that area will work fairly uh, will, well. You know, should work really really well, but in the old game because um, air, uh, maps are portaled off. That you have to go through yeah. a loading screen to get to the new map, um, you can't really do it, and that's when you start getting into like you're breaking out of yeah. maps because you, you you essentially just run out of game that's been loaded in on, onto your machine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's also a problem, you know. There's a lot of jumping puzzles that obviously have not been designed with gliding right. in mind, exactly. And so that that's yeah. obviously going to be a bit of a problem. Yeah. If you could glide mm -hmm. in, in in vanilla Guild Wars, then it would just break every <coughs> map that yeah. that they ever created. So yeah, it's a bit immersion breaking that you know, oh, I can glide in the jungle, but I can't outside. Mm -hmm. There, you know, there's really no fix for that right now. Maybe eventually they'll kind of go through and say, you know, try and. <laughs> <laughs> parts of maps that would be completely screwed if you know if you could glide yeah. in vanilla guild wars um and the same for world versus world and pvp um you can't glide in those either but um nothing's a hundred percent for certain like forever yeah. so eventually yeah. you might be able to glide in, in world versus world um yeah. but but definitely not at launch but I mean, I think I mean also, we've seen the fractal, the fractals mastery, and we've seen the precursor mastery, and those are for the old kind of Terry, old world, or whatever. Um, and hopefully, they will add a few more. I mean, they're revitalizing the kind of old vanilla maps because you know there's adventures, so there's going to be like speed runnings uh, for jumping puzzles and stuff like that. And I hope they do add a lot more um, masteries for for the kind of base game. Just yeah, like like they said, to make it not feel like oh, I'm leaving the Maguma, so I've kind of lost. A lot of the progress I've been put, you know, like working right. hard for. Like for for the that point, if like people are wondering why don't they just like like put like the gliding mechanic onto the entire old world system, is just that if you look at, because like they'll probably say and they're probably totally right, is that when they use the term like the tech, they just don't have the tech to probably do that. Because like if you look at like with Cataclysm for a while, when when they redid that old world, they kind of did that so that you could do flying in the old world. Mm -hmm. But for them to do that, they literally had to redo, like, on the very graphical, technical level to actually make everything 3D. Because when you're on the ground, totally, you can make a whole bunch of, like, um, uh, uh, cuts and, like, uh, uh, ways oh. around making yeah. it look like an actual world. Whereas if, it, whereas if you can actually fly around, then you need to yeah. actually go in and go, like, uh-oh, that space there, it's like a gap that big of like nothing yeah, yeah. <laughs> you have to actually mold it over so uh, I'm, I'm thinking arena net may have a similar issue as far as yeah, gliding overall. It's, it, it's, it, it, it's not really just uh, retexturing though they, they'd have to rebuild the entire game the yeah. difference between yeah. the between WoW and Guild Wars is that um, WoW is a completely open world you can walk from one end to the other and I suppose if you're inclined to swim across the sea in the middle you could probably do that as well um but with Guild Wars, they'd have to they'd have to get rid of portals. They'd have to redesign. They they they, they would have to rebuild the game to do it. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, well, it's like what I, you, I think you were saying not long ago, Alex. Like, you know, they would have to add mountains everywhere just to contain yeah. everything. Well, yeah, you know, absolutely. so you've got this huge yeah. stone wall around everything yeah. with this tiny little Azura gate, and that's the only way in and out of a map. Right. Um, well, you got to yeah. remember too that gliding is not flying. You have to yeah, get true. up somewhere Absolutely. and you're going to constantly be gliding down. So it's not like you, you would have to make this impossibly high yeah. mountain that we can't fly over because it's not flying. Mm -hmm. So that yeah. helps a little bit in that. So it's like maybe someday, but there's still the, the fact that there's, I'm sure there's jumping puzzles that you could pretty much yeah. just like fly to the end. Well, just, you know, little <laughs> bits like, you know, you could jump off one kind of ledge, land on a kind of wall. You know that you would have just slipped off normally. They could land on top of it and then fall down. You know, relog back into the top of a building or something. Then you're at like the highest point in the map mm. that you're not supposed to be able to get to. And mm. then 
Mm-hmm. You know, stuff like that. Fall- <laughs> Someone said that's not falling, that's falling with stuff. Falling with stuff. <laughs> yeah. uh, falling. <laughs> we got falling in the old world. <laughs> but yeah, oh, um, uh, oh, on you go. Move my hair. I was going to say, um, how was um, how was the stronghold, mm. Pichi? Tell stronghold us about the stronghold. was fun. And that's coming from someone who plays like 97% PvE. Stronghold yeah. <laughs> was really fun, but it's also because it reminded me a lot of an RTS game, which I love. Mm. So now I mm. don't like Guild Wars 2 PvP. I don't like any PvP, but I love <laughs> RTS, and it was so much fun, especially because like I, I played a Guardian. A lot of people played Revenant, and so they like, weren't quite sure what they were doing. So I was like, if I'm going to do any kind of <laughs> PvP, I'm going to be on the Guardian. Go. So yeah. I, went in, I went into Stronghold as Guardian, and like my... Once I kind of like we learned the system, I in the later um, in the later matches I said, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna put on all my speed skills and I'm gonna run supply like that's gonna be my mm-hmm. job, and you know when I got to the there's like a main like a center uh, central supply depot that you have to go and so if when I got in there and there was other players there I could decide well do I just want to go and try and try and get my supply because you have to kind of like channel it for like two or three seconds and then you get have yeah. a supply and then you can channel it again and get a second one and then you have to run back um if i encountered players in that center area which i commonly did because everybody else is from the other team is also coming to get supply um i had fun doing just those little tiny spurts of pvp yeah. You know, it wasn't like I was getting also because I was playing against people, even some people who, who aren't very familiar with the game. So maybe, you know, if if real PVPers get in there, I'm probably going to get my <laughs> ass kicked. But, yeah. um, you know, I didn't feel like as soon as I ran out into the world, I got destroyed, you know, by another player. Yeah. And that was my yeah. entire experience. Like, that's why I don't like PVP. But this I had other objectives. And so yeah. other people, you can kind of, it lets you play your own way. It lets you play how mm-hmm. you want. And if you want to follow, you're creating, um, it's Skrit and Tengu, actually, you're, um, that you, you take your supply and you either create um, archers, which are Tengu, or uh, door busters, which are Skrit with giant bombs that <laughs> yeah. run along your lane. And they go and you have to, you know, um, defeat the guards and then break down the gates. And you have to do that two or three times to get to the guild mm-hmm. lord. And... Um, so that's like another option. You can follow those NPCs and try and keep them alive. You can go and destroy the, um, the guards. If you watch, um, the video, um, Richie put out a video uh, about Stronghold and he did a fantastic job commentating it on where that was kind of like his job was going and following these NPCs and help them break down the, the doors and get through gates. Um, and then if you watch mine, it's mostly footage of me running back and forth getting supplies. Yeah. But you can also see when I get <clears> to the <throat> center and and fight the other the other players. And it was just yeah. fun. It was really fun. I think that's really I think that's super good because you know, it's it's very rare that you'll have to have like specific roles assigned to you in PvP, like just in, in terms of like conquest or whatever. And so it's gonna be cool to be able to kind of form a team and have right i'm gonna do this job like this is what i'm gonna be doing and i don't know like it's gonna make games a lot more interesting and the fact that you're gonna come across people with different strategies you know some people use the treb some people don't right i don't know it's it's adding a lot of depth to it and it's gonna be super fun to play around with i'm really looking forward to it so when um when it is the only place in the center where you get the supply or can you kind of nip round corners and try and attack them uh kind of in in their back line before you get to the guild lord or is it you yeah have to go through uh, and then you're breaking up a little bit um, yeah you, you're but, breaking uh, up too. um oh sorry man um as far <laughs> as i could tell that center that central hub was the only place to get supply now it, when you start out when you very first start the match everybody has one supply so you immediately need to run and create whatever like maybe create a couple yeah. archers and a couple door breakers mm-hmm. um and then you have to you have to run to the center both teams have this central place that they can get supply and so that's where the pvp happens um and uh, right so now don't the, i is there only going to be one stronghold map or are there others did they have yeah. they announced that no there's only there's only one i think mm. 
Well, I, I, I mean, this, this, this could be my misunderstanding, but I, I kind of got the impression that stronghold maps would be the maps for guild halls. Whether or not I'm just kind of putting my hmm. guild halls on experience to that. Uh, well, I don't think we know. We don't know anything about guild halls yet. Except so, they're going to be there. Uh, so, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So yeah. I'm not too sure. <laughs> I think it, it, it's likely that there's probably going to be a few different kind of styles of guild halls that you'll be able to get and work towards yeah. and stuff. So. Yeah, yeah and you can also we'll uh, you can also at one point during the match if you like catch it on the map you can summon Tarai Asa. You can go over and like channel what? at this point for like ten seconds, and as long as nobody kills you while you're channeling, you actually summon Tarai Asa. And then he gives you like tons of buffs, like if you're around him, and he like goes straight in and goes to to kill the guild lord. So that's like yet another like you kind of have to watch out for that. So make watch for him to appear so you can channel him. Make sure the other team isn't channeling him because I think only one team can have him at a time. <coughs> yeah, sure. it, it's kind of like open to anyone to channel, so it's like a a rush to get that. Right. I believe. Ah, right. That's There's a lot of different mechanics that go on, and, and mm -hmm. it, it was it was even more fun because we were all in the same room, and like me and Richie were always on a team. We were right next to each other, so he was up by the front gates. I was running supply, so when I would get to supply as I'm running back to our home base to, to use the supply, I would say, what do we need? Do we need archers? What should I make? Should I make archers? Should I make door breakers? And he would tell me, oh, we need some door breakers. So then I would go and make door breakers. That's, and it was that's the, cool. That kind of strategy was just really fun. It was really cool. I liked it a lot. It's cool. Well, oh, well, working it out about this time next week, Corvus, aren't we? Uh, yeah. yeah. And that's going to be Reds! fun Woo! as hell. Woo! I'm super looking forward to that. Um, <laughs> yeah. So anyone who's in the UK and is in chat or is watching this before next Saturday, obviously, on Aurora's channel, come and join us at Rest and yeah. do play, play the demo. Do it. <laughs> Go and party. <laughs> yeah. Never but, um, in the chat was, uh, was uh, commenting on my, my skill choices and such. Guys, I'm not a PvPer. I have no idea. Like, I have my skills that I use, and that's what I use. I know how to use nothing else. <laughs> Call me casual, but that's how I play. Is it? Retreat! Retreat! See, see the really... It's great. I can see uh, someone nick out your uh, healing signet. That's weird, because I always thought that Shelter was the, the meta heal for Guardian, because of the two-second block on it. Or is that? Or it, it does. It does default to the, yeah the two second block yeah. Yeah. But yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I was, <laughs> I'm so like, it doesn't I, heal I, as much as healing signet, <laughs> and healing signet also takes uh, conditions off of you. Conditions off you. Yeah. That's why I like that one. It's really weird. It's like um, my is point blank refused to play with me when I play guardian because I. I'm sod at it. Like I even I even <laughs> run like a tanky I run a tanky guardian and I still fall over. Me too. And yeah. Yeah. I'm so, I'm so so bad at it. I just stand at the back going pew 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 pew. <laughs> I I am so god awful at playing a guardian. And I feel like it's just like I'm always getting killed no matter how. I like try to get as tough and strong and yeah, I'm still getting like like my health bar suddenly goes like a little than. Oh, everything they down. Low health but, 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 yeah, but, 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 for, for being a guardian, they can be very squishy, and yeah. it really yeah. sucks. So I like I just have my toughness and and vitality maxed out, and, and I don't die as much. There's um uh, the 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 meta DPS build is is really really cool. If you use um, purging flames and you constantly have your virtue of justice activated, and it's Sword, sword focus, and great sword, and you rely on blinds and burns to mm -hmm. kind of tide you over. But, uh, once you stop, once I eventually stop sucking at playing guardian, I, I might actually be all right with it. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, I um, oh, think, uh, oh, go ahead. I was, I was, I was just going to say, have you guys checked out the uh, the the uh, gem store? In the last couple of days. Yeah, oh, guys. Yeah. Oh, um, if you don't so know, nice. wings. for the next like five today and for the next five days or so, there's going to be new um, gem store items every single day. They're only on sale for one day, and they're like they're fairly cheap. They're like on sale. Or some of them actually. The wings were pretty cheap. The wings were like yeah, five hundred gems. Five hundred gems, um, and I think the new outfit is seven hundred gems. Today. Okay. Yeah. 
Okay, so maybe they're not like on sale, have... sale, but they're only available for one day. They they will come back in the future. We just don't know when. But yeah. every single day you're going to have um, one I new item to get. New yeah. item, yeah. The exciting. Yeah. So the wings. Yeah. The wings. Who got the wings? I really wish the wings could like let you I got the wings. Yeah, I thought I, the wings, when I first I'm saw, never going to use them. When I, when I first saw those wings, I was like, this is like a glider skin. I'm like, this yeah. is a backpack? <laughs> like, really? Back so huge. <laughs> so big. Yeah. I, have they, I, had to buy, I bought them immediately. I was like, they're giant <laughs> wings, even if they're black and I might not use them. I actually put them on my little Asura, and uh, they look amazing. So. Even though they clip through the floor. What? <laughs> well, they clip like a mofo, but I don't care. Yeah. And I need, I require white wings. <laughs> yeah, diable wings or pink. I think we say pink, pink wings pink, before pink, the show pink. starts. <laughs> yeah. so Aurora they... wants pink wings, Arena. <laughs> uh, These are yes, called the peachy I'd wings. White, but yeah, peachy wings. <laughs> peachy wings. <laughs> um, so there's a, uh. there was a golden pig mini yesterday today yeah. there is a crystal outfit um, yeah it crystal, looks, crystal nomad like outfit. i haven't seen it yet that's it it yeah. looks pretty cool looks pretty cool awesome so yeah and then the next couple days there's going to be a new item every day so make sure to log in and see what it is and if you would like to buy it yes i'm probably gonna have to get the, just it's a crystal outfit it sounds like i need it so i don't think i have enough gems so i'm gonna have to buy some gems <laughs> <laughs> I can't actually buy any gems on me because I like need them, but PayPal won't let me for some reason. It's like, they can no, be overloaded. They can be like, buy. You, you should just try again. It might be that so many people are yeah. buying gems right now and doing exchanges and stuff that oh, maybe the system it, was maybe. overloaded. Yeah, yeah, the exchange rate is ridiculous because of <laughs> this huge influx. It's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> money, 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 money. But Sweet. it's money that's spent on making on making Guild Wars 2. Yep, no. and Heart of Can't Thrones complain. even better. Can't no, complain. I'm not complaining in the slightest. That's I'm true. happy. Right. Yeah. I want more gem store items. Yeah. Yeah. Guys, so by... if you don't have Guild Wars 2, or if you want another account, um, starting tomorrow, the 6th, 7th, and 8th, I believe, they're doing another 75% off sale. It's Guild... like 10 insane. bucks, man. Guild Wars 2 is going to be 10 bucks again. I'd never thought that they would do the sale again, but they are for PAX East. I am not gonna miss out on getting an EU account this time. I'm Woo! getting an EU account. Oh, I'm come gonna... join us, man! <laughs> join us! Right. I, I was so... Come to Gandara. Come to Gandara. It's the place to be. Oh, yeah, I didn't even think about picking a server. Uh -oh. <laughs> Gandara. Desolation is dead. Desolation is dead. Gandara is <laughs> Gandara's the place to be. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, guys. It, like just buy copies for relatives and, yeah, and get them yeah. into like, it. I, and, uh, I was like, I might buy two. I might like <laughs> buy one and give one away. Like it's ten oh, bucks. Good idea. And that. guys, good, if good you idea. do, if you do, scroll down. Buy that big Guild Wars two. Buy, buy Guild Wars from, two button. Buy it from. I'm on the other am side. I pointing the right direction? Oh, there we go. Buy it up there. <laughs> <laughs> that is a buy it from link. this you lady will, in you the will help out, You will help me and this channel out if you use that referral link. So. That would be amazing. Starting tomorrow. <laughs> yes. I've 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 got some guildies in chat. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Just been whoring us out in chat, going, "Come watch us! Come watch us!" <laughs> All right, guys, we're actually going to end the official episode here. If you are watching this live on Twitch, then we are going to hang out for a little bit and talk with you guys in chat for the post show. Yeah. Um. But everybody watching on YouTube, thank you so much for watching. Everybody here on Twitch, thank you so, so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the show. Um, if you did, make sure to give us a like on all our YouTube channels, that it will be in Twitch chat or down in the description if you're watching this on YouTube. We will see you guys next time. Thank you so much for watching. Bye. 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 Take care.